1972, Marvel Comics released Marvel Spotlight No. 5, the first appearance of the most supernatural superhero of them all, Ghost Rider, a man possessed by a demon who constantly craves vengeance against evil. In 1995, Toy Biz released the first series of toys based on Ghost Rider, and today we'll be taking a look at Ghost Rider, here on Creed's Collection. Welcome back to another episode of Creed's Collection and the return of the four weeks of Halloween. Today we're taking a look at Ghost Rider from the 1995 Ghost Rider toy line by Toy Biz. And it's another unboxing video. You can see here in the package you get Ghost Rider himself, his chains, and behind him is an included mini comic book. But quite possibly the most important thing on the front of the package is that it lets you know Ghost Rider has flame glow details. That's right, it's another spooky glow-in-the-dark figure, just in time for Halloween. Here on the back of the card, you can see a little blurb about Ghost Rider that we'll check out later, as well as the other figures in the line and the vehicles. But now it's time to slice Ghost Rider open and get him out of the package. Once again, if you are an inbox collector, I am so sorry to do this to you. And there he is, Ghost Rider. Let's go ahead and get him off the tray. Stunt motorcyclist Johnny Blaze, desperate to save his father's life, agrees to give his soul to an archdemon named Mephisto, who was posing as Satan. After the deal is done, at night, in the presence of evil, Johnny is consumed by hellfire, his head transforming into a flaming skull. He rides a fiery motorcycle into the night, punishing the wicked with his newfound abilities, later learning that he is bonded with the demon Zarathos. Through that bond, Blaze gains the ability to wield Hellfire and use it to burn the souls of evildoers. His supernatural chains that obey his every whim and the devastating penance stare, making the person locked in his gaze feel the pain and suffering of every horrible act they've ever committed. That would probably be a really terrifying experience for a villain. So let me get this straight. You have a glowing skull and an included mini-comic? Yeah. We're actually a lot alike. I guess we are. Hmm, how do we decide who's the best? How about a staring contest? No, uh, I mean, no, thank you. I, I'm okay. I changed my mind. Yeah, Scareglow. You do not want to mess with that. Anyway, now that we know a bit more about Ghost Rider, let's take a closer look. I think Toy Biz did a really good job on this Ghost Rider figure. Typically they are hit or miss, but I think they really crushed it on this one. The skull has a really nice sculpt to it. As we get closer, you can see the paint application is excellent, especially on the teeth. One minor complaint though is the flame effects look good from the side, but in the front they look like hair, and it really reminds me of Pennywise from IT. I do like the jacket, it looks pretty nice. I like the shoulder spikes in particular and the open collar. Because it is so darkly colored, it is hard to see the details, but they are there and they look pretty nice, especially the forearm and knuckle spikes. Both of Ghost Rider's hands are molded open so you can put his chain weapon in either one. As we come down to his legs, you can see his pants are actually gray. I know they look black in most of the shots and you can still see more spikes and these cool chains on the highly polished boots, which I think look fantastic. This figure is very classic Ghost Rider in almost every way. He even has really good articulation for a Toy Biz figure, and we'll go ahead and look at that right now. So here at the knee, he has a 90 degree bend, as you can see. And then here at the hip, he has something totally different. He has actually a ball joint. I was surprised to see that, but I imagine it's there so you can pose him on a motorcycle. Now here at the shoulder, he does have a joint that goes up and all the way around full 360 if you want. Here at the elbow, he has a 90 degree bend. And then of course here at the head, he can look left and he can also look right. And that is it. That covers all nine points of articulation for Ghost Rider. Now we're gonna take a look at Ghost Rider's accessories starting with this chain, which as you can see is rigid and it's kind of in this whipping formation. I have to say the links look incredible and this is a great sculpt. 
It's got a handle uh, down here on the end, which is of course what Ghost Rider holds it with. And he holds onto it perfectly. And now we're gonna take a look at his chain whipping action. Here on his back, there is a switch. It's kind of hard to see, but here I'll turn him in profile and you'll be able to see it pretty easily. To activate the switch, you wanna take his arm and actually wind it up. It's got a little motor inside of it. And once you do that, you push the switch to release it. So let's go ahead and wind up the arm like so. And then you take the button and push it. And there you go, chain whipping action. Ghost Rider's second accessory is this chain and studded belt that wraps around him. Now this is extremely hard to take on and get off, so I am not going to take it off. I'm just going to show it to you on his person. You can see it pegs in there and there, and it's super tight. But what's really cool about it is that it glows in the dark, as does his skull. So we're going to go ahead and check that out right now. Man, I love glow-in-the-dark features. They look so good. And while he's not nearly as impressive as Scare Glow, I still think it's great. The last thing included with Ghost Rider is this mini-comic. It's actually part six, and uh, it's pretty short. It's only a few pages, but the art is nice, and I'm sure if you had all of them, it would tell a pretty cool story. Regardless, I love it when they include things like this with toys. I think it flushes out the world a lot, and you even get a little advertisement on the back. The copyright date for Ghost Rider is extremely hard to make out. It's on the bottom of his right foot, 1995 Marvel, Toy Biz Incorporated. Here's a closer look at the info that was on the back of the card. If you'd like to read it, pause now. And now for our He-Man size comparison. While He-Man is used to dealing with guys with skulls for heads, he has never seen one on fire before. And it would probably take him a minute to figure out that Ghost Rider is a good guy. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy retrospective for Ghost Rider from the 1995 Ghost Rider toy line by Toy Biz. And just like that, we're halfway through the return of the four weeks of Halloween, as this was the fourth episode of eight. I cannot believe how fast it's going by. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a like and a comment. You know I love reading and responding to them. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it and it would help my channel grow. I do a retrospective on a toy from my vintage collection every Wednesday. So hope to see you next week and every week after here on Creed's Collection.